morning, good morning, and welcome to our country music, whoop, country music service. Uh, for those of you watching at home, I apologize if the audio is a little out of sync. <clears throat> I had a slight technical uh, problem as we were getting set up this morning. But here, it sounds fine. So if you wanted to hear the music <laughs> match our lips, you should be here. <laughs> well, welcome to Birchcliff Bluffs uh, United Church on this Music Sunday, the last Sunday of every uh, month we do a Music Sunday, and um, I see lots of familiar faces here, so that's good. And uh, we've never done a country music one before, though, so uh, it should be a lot of fun. We've pulled out a lot of stuff that the choir, some choir has done with me here before, and some that we've never done here before, so it'll be, but all the lyrics for you will be up on the screen, so please do follow along and, um, and try to stick with us. <laughs> okay, I think we'll start the, uh, this morning's service with the lighting of our candles. As we gather here this morning, we remember that all are welcome in this place. May the light that shines from these flames illuminate our path ahead and help us to flourish together in love, peace, and justice. The Land Acknowledgement. We now take a moment to acknowledge the sacred land beside the water on which Birchcliff Bluffs United Church stands. It has been the site of human activity for many thousands of years. This land is the traditional territory of the Huron-Wendat, the Patoon First Nations, the Seneca, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit River. We are grateful for the opportunity to live and work on this territory, and we seek to be mindful of broken covenants and the need to strive to make right with all our relations. Okay, we're going to join together on our first uh, song of the service. This is called Turn Your Radio On, and it uh, dates way back to 1938 by a well-known uh, gospel composer of those days named Albert Brumley. And uh, it's been covered a bunch of times over the years, and some of you may remember Ray Stevens, the guy who sang The Streak had a, uh, a version of this back in the 70s as well on one of his albums that got some radio play. And, uh, oh, choir, I believe you cut out the third verse. So keep an eye for it. <laughs> All right, turn your radio on. Well, come and listen in to the radio station where the mighty host of heaven sing. Turn your radio on.
there's going to be lots of stuff thrown at you that you may not know this morning, so great. We're going to continue on with the uh, life and work of our church. Hello. Good morning. Here at Birchcliff Bluffs. So uh, the life and work of the church. So next Sunday, we are here at Birchcliff Bluffs. But our uh, sound person, Paisley Sears, is going to be speaking at Fair Lawn United uh, for Pride Sunday. And they're going to be telling Fair Lawn all about Toby's Place and Dorothy's Place. So that's going to be great. So give them lots of encouragement. Uh, and um, Scarborough, or July and August, uh, we won't be worshiping here but you're invited to Scarborough Bluffs United to worship there throughout the summer, if you choose. And also here, uh, next Saturday morning, I understand, there will be uh, continuing with the tomato plant sale. So if you want tomato plants, like these are amazing, many different varieties of tomatoes, uh, of plants, and you can plant them and get lots of input on how to do that, because Michelle's pretty excellent with it. So they'll be here next Saturday morning. And uh, now we are going to hear from our quilting group and the draw, I'm very excited. I'm Shirley Scott, and uh, I am part of the 10 Thimbles quilting group here. We meet on Tuesday afternoons, and everyone is welcome to come. And if you're not a quilter, you can come and gab, because we do a lot of that. <laughs> and Daniel, who's our guest this morning, is going to be our drawer. Oh, shuffle? yes. I'm going to shuffle my hand as well. <laughs> Winner is Mary Cannings. <laughs> 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 Well, and how interesting, because the next person to come up and speak is Mary Cannings. <laughs> <laughs> Not that that was arranged that way, I'm sure. I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> You'll have to excuse my voice. I'm, I'm doing my Lauren Bacall impression this morning. Um, I would like to just say, for the country music, I'm, I'm very sorry about the dearth of cowboy hats. Um, we do have somebody who's got a very sparkly jacket, which is very appropriate, and Daniel is dressed appropriately. <laughs> I was very impressed. Thank you. Okay. Our scripture this morning is Psalm 29. Give glory to God, you heavenly court. Give God glory and strength. Give forth the glory that God's name deserves and worship God in the splendor of holiness. The voice of God resounds over the waters. The God of glory thunders over the raging seas. God's voice is powerful. God's voice is full of majesty. The voice of God snaps the cedars, shatters the cedars of Lebanon. It makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syria like a young ox. The voice of God strikes with bolts of lightning. The voice of God shakes the wilderness the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of God twists the oaks and strips the forest there. And in God's temple all cry, glory. God sits in judgment over the flood. God is its ruler forever. Give strength to your people, God. Bless your people with peace. Our second reading is from the Epistle to the Romans. Chapter 8, verses 12 to 17. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. 
For if you live by its dictates, you will die. But if, through the power of the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when you were adopted as God's own children. For the spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are God's children, we are God's heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share the glory, we must also share the suffering. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. All right, we're going to continue on with a, a song um, written by Thomas Dorsey, who some of you remember. I've told stories about him before here, how he wrote a, a great many gospel hits back in the 30s. Uh, and this was one that ended up being um, kind of crossing over into the pop idiom and had lots of uh, contemporary singers of the 50s and 60s record versions, including Elvis and Sam Cooke. Um, and we've done it here, I think, a couple of times over the years. It's called Peace in the Valley. I am tired and weary, but I must toil on till the Lord comes to call me away. Where the morning is bright and the Lamb is the light and the night is as fair as the day.
Okay, now we're going to bring up, uh, well, he's already there. We're going to bring up um, our friend uh, Daniel Gibran, who's here playing fiddle with us this morning. And Laura Lee's going to join us over here to sing as well. And we're going to do, and Charlie on guitar, and we're going to do a couple of numbers, uh, the four of us. So hopefully you like these ones. And the, the lyrics won't be up on the screen for these, but if you do know them, please feel free to sing along. I'm going to start with a song that I've always loved um, called This Old House, which actually gave the title to the, the TV series. And um, but this song was written in the 50s, but there was a great version in the 80s by a British singer called uh, Shaken Stevens, and he does it kind of like an Elvis Presley number, and that's where I first learned it. Uh, but it's a great old country tune, and the story behind it is Stuart Hamblin, the, the writer, was out on a hunting trip with John Wayne. And they were in the woods with their hunting dogs, and they came upon an old ramshackle shack, and they went inside, and they found a dead body, and the guy's hunting dog still there. And the, I, I assume they called the police, um, I'm not sure, but uh, Stuart was, was inspired by this because he thought uh, using the metaphor of a house tumbling down, to he thought it described this guy's life perfectly because his house was kind of falling down and now he had died. And so he turned this song, so it's basically all about an old house tumbling down, but it's, it's a metaphor. This old house once knew my children, this old house once knew my wife. This old house was home and comfort as we fought the storms of life. This old house once rang with laughter, this old house heard many shouts. Now he trembles in the darkness when the lightning walks about. Ain't I gonna need this house no longer, ain't I gonna need this house no more. Ain't got time to fix the shingles, ain't got time to fix the floor. Ain't got time to is no to mend the window pane. Ain't gonna need this house no longer. I'm getting ready to meet the saints. This old house is getting shaky. This old house is getting old. This old house lets in the rain. This old house lets in the cold. Oh, my knees are getting chilly, but I feel no fear nor pain. Cause I see an angel peeking through a broken window pane. Ain't I gonna need this house no longer? This old house is afraid of thunder. This old house is afraid of storms. This old house just groans and trembles when the night wind flings its arms. This old house is getting feeble. This old house is needing paint. Just like me, it's tuckered out. Getting ready to meet the saints. Ain't I gonna need this house no longer? Ain't I gonna need this house no more? Ain't got time to fix the shingles. Ain't got time to fix the floor. Ain't got time to build the hinges. one is an interesting one. It's called The Great Speckled Bird, and it was written again way back in the 30s, and it's lifted straight out of biblical verse, but you may remember, those of you who remember Ian and Sylvia Tyson, uh, Ian's backup band was called The Great Speckled Bird, and they toured with them for years, and they had a couple of albums, and they took their name from this song. Um, I, I'm not sure why, but they did. As a kid, I always wondered, I thought, because you'd watch Ian Tyson on, on his television series, and they'd say, and, and The Great Speckled Bird, and I thought as a kid that was the funniest name for a band. <laughs> Um, okay, and, we'll, and we're going to give this one a, a try, and Laura Lee, you're going to sing lead for us. Excellent.
Now this next one, <clears throat> um, again, as I, I often reference back to things that I saw as a kid, and it seems to me every time they sang a gospel song on Hee Haw, it was this one. <laughs> so that's where I heard it was on, on all these, these comedians howling away on this song. Um, if you ever want to see it, just Google this name, Gone Home, <clears throat> Gone Home and Hee Haw, and you'll find like 10 different versions of it, which is hilarious. But uh, it's also a great old song by Bill Carlisle. He was a country singer back in the 50s. He never recorded this song because he wrote comedy numbers. He was well known as a comedian. Uh, and this is not a comedy song. It's called Gone Home. But a lot of other people recorded it. Um, so I'm sure Bill made a lot of money off it over his lifetime. Uh, and this one, you can actually help us a bit because there's going to be a line that says, they have gone home, they have gone home. And that's all you have to sing. And each time we come to it, you'll hear it because the choir will be doing it as well. And you'll hear the line, gone home. And you sing, they have gone home, they have gone home. That's it. It happens three times in each verse, so it's really easy to grab. Why don't we give that a try? <laughs> On three, one, two, three. They have gone home, they have gone home. Lovely. Okay, okay, well, this is great. We're going to sound better than Hee Haw on this one. <laughs> oh, one, two, three, two, two, three. I'm sure a few weeks ago when we first announced we were doing Country Music Sunday, some of you started worrying that we would be singing songs about trucks, hunting dogs, and drinking. <laughs> uh, especially one of you in particular. Um, but I assure you, all, all the songs we're singing this morning uh, have lyrics that are fitting uh, for a church. I could have called today's uh, service uh, Southern Gospel Music, but instead of country. But the thing is, we say Southern Gospel, that also brings up ideas of, of um, 
uh, spirituals from African-American backgrounds, and that's not really the music we're doing at all. It's much more contemporary kind of country music. So that's the problem with trying to specify what style of music we're doing, is that some songs, or most songs actually, will defy a singular designation, right? We try and categorize music for simplicity, but uh, songs have a way of becoming whatever they want to be and frequently ignore any attempts to control them. Last Music Sunday, I was talking about how in the early days of recordings, the industry decided they were only going to make an attempt to focus the recordings on whatever group they thought would buy them. So in other words, uh, black music was never marketed to a white audience. The pop charts, country charts, and um, blues charts, and gospel charts were all independent of each other. And so songs didn't always cross over. So it says something about certain pieces of music that some of these songs still managed to work their way and cross over between multiple genres, genres and audiences in spite of the best efforts of the, of the music producers and, uh, and labels to keep them separate. Now, I grew up with a guitarist dad who loved country music. It was frequently playing in our house, so I was surrounded by it all the time, sometimes to my mom's chagrin. I recall this one particular day, dad was in the basement playing an album of country fiddle tunes that went on and on and on. And at one point, <laughs> point my mom walked past me in the hall and said, and to think your father says rock and roll music all sounds the same. That's, uh, you know, when most people talk about the first concert they ever uh, attended, I think most of you probably will talk about some group that was popular during your own teenage years, and that would have been your first concert you ever went to. In my case, my first concert uh, was my dad taking me to see a triple bill of Hank Snow, Wilf Carter, and Stomping Tom Connors. And, yeah, I know, on a triple bill, can you believe it? And, um, and we were right in the front row. My dad was working with, uh, with them at the time, and so we got to go back. He took me backstage to meet them all afterwards. And I remember, I thought it was amazing. I, I think I was 11 or something. Um, but I remember being most taken by Hank Snow's bad toupee. If anyone remembers seeing it, he always had this like lump of plastic on his head. And I, as a kid, I'd never seen a toupee before, so I was fascinated by this thing on his head. Over the years, dad took us to see Dottie West, Tommy Hunter, various other country artists. So when I'd mentioned to kids at school the, which musicians I had just gone to see the night before, the, I would, the invariable comment would be, who? <laughs> so needless to say, I wasn't the coolest kid when it came to concert going. <laughs> Didn't have to laugh that hard. <laughs> One of the first groups to really blend a country music and gospel lyrics was the Carter family, which I'm sure many of you have heard of. A.P. Carter, along with his wife Sarah and his sister Maybell, who you probably remember, we used to call Mother Maybell Carter because she's mother to June Carter, who married Johnny Cash. So the families are intertwined. Um, but the original trio performed as a group from 1927 to 1956. They've subsequently reformed over the years with different family members, but that was the original trio. They were the very first vocal group to become country music stars, the very first, and were among the very first groups to actually record any country music. And their music so had a profound influence on other styles like bluegrass, country, southern gospel, pop, and rock music. Um, AP was always really interested in digging up and recording old folk tunes from the Appalachian area of the United States, where they were from. Some of the songs became so closely associated with the Carter family that uh, AP has been mistakenly, by many, credited for writing several of them. One example was Keep on the Sunny Side of Life. Um, it was actually dates way back to 1901, but AP found it uh, on one of his trips through the mountains and they recorded it and so everybody heard their version of it first and that's where most people learned it from. Another one, even more famous, that we will be singing at the end of today's service is Will the Circle Be Unbroken? Now in this case, AP took the original song written in 1907, rewrote all the verses and just kept the melody, the, the melody was the same and the chorus stayed the same. Um, and that's the version that's been recorded over and over again. Nitty Gritty Dirt Band had a hit with it back in the 70s. Johnny Cash had a hit with it, and there's been all kinds of versions of it. But they tend to use A.P. Carter's lyrics for the verses. And as the choir knows, because I've talked about this before, um, I don't like his verses. The original ones are quite lovely. Uh, his verses were all about watching your mother's funeral. So it's, you're watching your mother's casket roll away in the hearse. And it's like, it's not the most uplifting song. I've ever heard. So today, because I am a purist, we're going back to 1907 and we're going to use the original lyrics. And I think you'll find, you'll agree with me, they're not quite as horrifying as those about your mother's funeral. So now back in my college days, I formed this loosely structured country band with some various actor musician friends of mine, including Daniel over here on fiddle. We chose the name Clem and the Country Bumpkins. 
And we used to play at these little Montreal folk venues like the Yellow Door and uh, the Gollum, Gollum Coffee House, I think it was called, which by that point were a bit past their heyday. They were kind of 90, early 70s coffee houses and they were still around. I think, I think Yellow Door still is. And we would go in there and play. We, we came up with what we, thought, what we thought was a funny idea. There wouldn't be an actual Clem in our band. Instead, we would constantly reference the fact that Clem hadn't arrived yet. We were waiting for him, but he never shows up. Very good dough of us, I thought. <laughs> This occasionally did, of course, backfire, since I guess our audiences didn't uh, get the sly Samuel Beckett reference. After what, at least one performance, I heard a, an audience member say, well, that's why they didn't sound very good. The main musician was missing. <laughs> and we also had a rotating group of musicians, because we weren't really focused that much on, on this band. I recall one night when our, whoever was playing bass uh, for us couldn't, wasn't available, so we replaced him with a friend of ours who played cello. <laughs> which I think in retrospect is a bit like replacing Austin Matthews with Juan Guzman. I mean, they're both great players, but they're not necessarily interchangeable. So clearly our band was not destined for greatness. However, there was this one song that we sang every show. I think it was the first one we learned. It was called On the Wings of a Dove. And it's written by Bob Ferguson back in 1958, but it was popularized by a recording by the country singer Ferlin Husky. Um, his recording not only topped the country charts for 10 weeks, it also peaked at number 12 on the rock and roll charts. It was one of our favorites back then, and so now you'll all get a chance to sing it with us. So just imagine what a rare opportunity this is. We had lots of interchangeable members over the years, but as of today, you can all become honorary members of Clem and the Country Bumpkins. <laughs> so we're going to try Wings of a Dove. The lyrics will be up on the screen. When troubles surround us, when evils come, the body grows weak, the spirit grows numb. When these things forget us, he does not forget. Wings of 
the band. <laughs> At uh, this time in the service, um, we like to remember the many gifts that we all enjoy and consider ways that we might be able to give back as we are able to help support the work of this church in our community. Give us this... Whoop. Oh, I got the wrong thing in front of me. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, bless these bless gifts, these gifts we that we offer. offer. Bless those who offer them. Bless those who will receive in turn. May this circle of blessings continue. Amen. Amen. Sorry, my pages got shuffled. <laughs> um, okay, we're going to continue with... Uh, did we decide... Did I hand this to you yet? No. I gave this to you already? Yeah. What's that? No, no, you didn't. Okay, we'll just chat a little while I sort my pages out. Um, so I was supposed to give Daniel a prayer to read right now. And then uh, what I'll talk about is, uh, as soon as it's done, we're, go we're going to uh, sing a version of the Lord's Prayer. And um, I, I put together a new version a couple of years ago that we've been singing every, every music Sunday here in church. So it'll be a different melody than you're used to. Um, but I was trying to write, put together a version that was a little less... Um, a uh, little more uh, all-encompassing, a little more inclusive language in this version. But we'll start with uh, Daniel and uh, the country prayer. Oh yes, I'm proud to know for sure I'm going home one day. But Lord, I've got just one request about where I'm going to stay. I know you got a place for me, a huge mansion in the sky. But living big is not for me, no matter how I try. I'd like to make a simple trade. My mansion, harp and, cra and crown, for just a simple cabin placed beyond the edge of town. I'll give up walking the streets of gold for a pathway through the woods, as long as heaven's where I'm at. I think I'll be that good. I just ask for a piece of land, a place to hang my wings, a porch with hooks in the roof to hold my favorite swing, a view of hills with grass so green, in shade of big old trees, the smell of lilacs in the air. That'll be all right for me. Amen. Please join together in the Lord's Prayer. Creator in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your dominion come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our going to head into our uh, last song of the day, but it's actually our second to last because there'll be another one after this, but we consider this the last song of the service, and we're going to do the, uh, the song I was talking about with the Carter family earlier on called Will the Circle Be Unbroken. Before we do that, though, I want to thank uh, Daniel for being here on, on violin again today. I want to thank Laura Lee for singing lead on some of our songs. Thank you so much. I want to thank Charlie, of course, for backing us up on guitar. Thank you, Charlie. And a special thanks to the choir, who I throw a pile of music at all the time. And nobody ever complains. At least not to my face. Maybe, maybe there's a Facebook page devoted to it. I'm not sure. Um, okay, we're going to continue with the original words of Will the Circle Be Unbroken? Thank you. 
Mercy. Next slide. Next. Next slide, please. Next. And now, may goodness and mercy be our source, our guide, and our destination as we continue our journey. Let us go forward, sharing that love with all those who we meet, and work for justice and peace for all people. Amen.
you all so much for coming today. Uh, we'll be having another music service the last Sunday in June, so please come here and join us for that. And please join us uh, for coffee and uh, snacks right now. Thank you so much again.